What's up, my fellow lionesses and lions? Welcome to the Project Lioness podcast. We are here to disrupt the mainstream narrative when it comes to health, holism, and human consciousness. We are here to share bold truths about health and life from a female perspective. This episode is brought to you by our team, Inspire Co., where we stand for your health being inspired by choice rather than being inhibited by chance. Thank you for being here and joining in on these raw, real, and powerful conversations. We hope our show brings you inspiration and empowerment to overcome challenges, reclaim your life, and ultimately pursue your mission with power, purpose, and play. Now, let's get into the episode. If you don't know this song, Everything you already. it's called Already Here by Three Pounds. Everything you want is already here. What's up, y'all? This is Dr. Mel, back at it again, solo casting. I love that song. I actually was introduced to that song on the chiropractic table when I was seeing my network spinal practitioner and I loved it because of the message. Everything you want is already here, here in this very moment and including your healing, including your health, including your wholeness. And I'm here today to talk about the illusions and addictions of healing. Yes, I said it. Addiction and healing in the same sentence. People can get addicted to their healing, y'all. I'll get into what that actually looks like and how that can manifest. So as someone who has been in the holistic health world for a long time, personally and professionally, I have a somewhat love-hate relationship with the word healing. And I think it can be really misconstrued and misused if you approach it with the wrong perspective. Like, what do you mean by healing? So a lot of this podcast, I'm going to talk about what are the illusions of healing and how do we make that shift towards wholeness? Now I get as a business owner, and if you're an entrepreneur and you're a, perhaps you're a holistic entrepreneur and you are a healer, right? You, you label yourself as a healer and you serve a lot of people. That's not wrong. But just know that the healing happens within the client. The healing happens within the person. The healing happens within your patients, within your practice members. And you are simply a facilitator of their own healing power. The body's intelligent. The nervous system is intelligent. And the body can heal itself when given the proper nutrients, when given the proper resources. And there's less interference to that healing capacity. And that healing energy moves through the central nervous system. So just know that if you are a holistic practitioner, orient yourself maybe a little differently and see what it would be like to operate knowing that your clients are the healers and you're the facilitator and you get to be in partnership with them, not overpower them. You're not the guru, you're not the hero, but rather how can you be the guide? How can you be the facilitator? So some myths of, this might be a little bit shorter podcast, but I'm just, I'm just jamming. This is something I downloaded and Something I hear a lot in the healing space, in the holistic practitioners that I work with, that I coach, I care for other practitioners in my office. You know, sometimes people call me like the chiropractors, chiropractors, see a lot of other chiropractors and and people who work with a lot of people. And there are some myths out there that I think are really important to deconstruct and help us shift. So that we can all step into our healing potential. We can all step into our healing power and not outsource it to someone else. Speaking of healing, again, I'm I'm at the home studio and my husband and I are in in the self-healing experience, right? Our bodies are are clearing out the gunk of 2022. And so if you hear from myself or from him clearing out that energy in our bodies, 
you know, you know what that is, right? Done is better than perfect. That's what happens when you live in like a little, my house is kind of almost set up like a studio where there's not a lot of rooms, <laughs> but there's, it's just a lot more open space. So we work with it and it's fun. And at times, you know, you got to adapt. You got to adapt all the time, right? Myths of healing. What does healing mean or represent? And then again, this is, these are concepts and ideas that I've heard and seen from clients, from the culture, from my colleagues, from my practice members. And I, I'm bringing more of these teaching components to the podcast because I feel as though I can get a message out there to more people versus having the same conversation with one person on the table. And I think it will serve you, even if you're not a client of mine or a practice member, I think this will serve you regardless of where you're at in your wholeness journey. So um, another reason for this podcast was I was noticing I would have these moments of teaching with clients and with practice members and they'd be like, wow, that's like, why don't, why don't I know that? Why isn't this out there in the culture? Why, why is this the first time I'm hearing this? Or you should share that more often. So this podcast allows me to express that in a way where I can reach more people and you can hear it. So it's not repeated over and over and over again, one to one, but one to many. So there you go. There's a little bit more inspiration for Project Linus podcast. So here are some myths and you're probably aware of them. And if you're not, here we go. So the first myth of healing is that it's never ending and it never stops. And I think that comes down to the way that the like healing, right? Ending in ing. Anything that ends in ing means it's a continuous process and it's happening in the moment. So healing, when you say I'm on this healing journey, there can be a misperception that it's never ending and it never stops. And there is some truth to this, but also there's there's a myth because if you constantly are on a healing journey, that could also mean that you're never fully healed until you die right? Or you're never fully whole until you transition into the afterlife, whatever that's going to look like for all of us. I don't know, but I have my theories. So one myth is that it's never ending and it never stops. And that can then lead to a cascade of the other ones I'll mention. More importantly, it can lead to almost getting the second point addicted to your healing process. And it can take you out of actually just living your freaking life, right? We can get so caught up in like, I'm healing and I'm doing my work and I'm doing these things. And you almost get addicted to the process because it does feel good to work on yourself. And it does feel good to like go to healers and go to get body work and to, to do the thing and go to seminars. And at the same time, my challenging question to you is, is that just really a distraction for living your life? And really just being whole as you are now. Sometimes when I see that, people are like, what the hell do you mean by whole? And what I mean is accepting all the parts of you. Accepting that sometimes you are amazing and you're a leader and sometimes you're just an asshole and you're being a a jerk, you know? And that's part of you. That's part of, that's an archetype of you. Or maybe you have dark parts that have jealousy or envy or you feel like you you know, don't want to engage with people and set a hard boundary and you you feel like you're being standoffish, right? These are all parts of us. There's somewhere between four to 5,000 characteristics and traits of the human experience and we embody all of them. And all of those traits and characteristics and parts of us serve. However, we have created a culture where the shadowy parts, as people say, can be left to the wayside or not addressed. That's where the work like shadow work comes in. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think To get back to my point, you can get really addicted to the healing process of like love and light and enlightenment. And anytime there's a contrast to that or the opposite of that shows up, you think you're like not doing your healing work when in reality, that's part of wholeness. That's part of being human, right? You're you're part human, part animal, part angelic alien, you know, Um, as I learned from my, one of my amazing mentors, Brian Lum, you'll hear me say his name quite a bit. You're all those things. And when we get addicted to one side, addiction happens when we are conscious of the upsides of one thing, or well, we're conscious of the upsides and the downsides, but we feel as though we need to live into just the upsides. And we're not aware that the downsides or the drawbacks or the dark side can actually serve us in our wholeness. And that a lot of those quote unquote dark parts of us can support our protection. It can support our 
like survival, you know? Sometimes we have to throw up the protector, we have to throw up the defender, or we have to throw up the fire alarm when there's actually a true threat. And not to judge those parts of us, but know that they don't have to run the show. (coughs) By the way, a lot of what I'm speaking about, I'll, I'll leave some links in the show notes here. What I'm speaking to a couple books, this stems from one is No Bad Parts by Richard Schwartz, an amazing book, highly recommend it. It is exactly what it sounds. We don't have any bad parts. All parts serve and different parts of us come online when they need to, given certain experiences in our life. Sometimes what happens though is let's say we experience something as a teenager and our archetype of the massive protector and defender and the angsty teenager came online and maybe that part stayed online a little bit longer than it perhaps served us, right? And there's other parts like the you know, the queen or the um, altruistic person, right? Or the humanitarian, like all these parts of us, we want to have come online when it's appropriate. And sometimes when we experience cathartic moments of what we perceive as trauma, sometimes those parts stay online a little bit longer than what we want, right? And then the other book is Healing Myths, Healing Magic by Dr. Donnie Epstein, who is the developer of Network Spinal Care. So I highly recommend getting those books in your library. Um, As you can see, I'm a student of the game. I have a huge library behind me. I got books everywhere. Sometimes my husband's like, where's the space in the freaking house? (laughs) It's just filled with books and stuff, right? So back to my point. So number one, we talked about healing is a myth of never ending and never stops, which can then lead to an addiction of the healing process to take you out of things that you just want to enjoy and just be with and be able to be with challenges and be with different personalities and be with different parts of other people that are being expressed. So this can look like, oh, sorry, I can't, I can't do that thing. I'm too busy healing. I'm too busy healing. But are you really just disassociated or are you disconnected or you think that healing means you need to be like, happy-go-lucky all the time. That's really not what it means. Healing, another myth, can mean that you're always seeking, which comes back to point number one. You're always seeking something outside of you to support your healing, when in reality, the healing comes from within. You are the healer. You are the doctor. And everything and everyone else is simply a guide, a mirror, a feedback loop into your wholeness. And really a resonance and those feedback loops can provide exactly the parts of you that you have yet to learn to love and integrate and become whole. So healing can mean and get us into the myth of always seeking and that we're like never actually found. We're never actually home. We're always going and trying to find the thing for our next healing experience. That's another myth is healing experiences can often be disguised as like some euphoric experience that feels good, but it doesn't actually bring you towards wholeness and integration. What I mean by that is going to different retreats, going to different, you know, I know psychedelics are a really big thing right now. Um, There's a renaissance of that. And I'm definitely a supporter of that type of work. However, if you're constantly just looking for an experience, but not actually integrating the wisdom, you're constantly going to be looking for another experience thinking that the experience is going to bring you wholeness versus like just integrating that magic into your everyday life. If you haven't listened to my episode on pleasure titration, this is what I'm talking about. You can find magic in in a cup of coffee or crying in your car at the DMV or from the fireplace in your home or just looking at a plant, right? It doesn't need to be these crazy expensive things. Now, again, those cathartic healing experiences And seminars and workshops and retreats can be really powerful, but how are you integrating it? That's the key. This is one of our, this is one of the gaps that I've seen, which is a main motivator of why we created the Inspire Immersion, because we wanted to create something different than just your average escapism retreat. We actually wanted to invite people to a four-day experience that, yes, is in a healing space and is in nature and away from technology and just very rooted with earth and rooted with people and community so that we could teach you and then take these things that you're learning and you're going to have experiences at the Inspire Immersion, no doubt, because we bring you through body exercises, breath work, holotropic breath work, right? You're going to have a cathartic experience. And at the same time, you're also going to be learning sustainable strategies to integrate in your every life so that you're not dependent on like the next healing experience. So I'll drop the link in the show notes here of our next Inspire Immersion in 2023. And you can take a look at that. We've got a couple spots left. Another myth of healing is that you're never whole. So seeking, meaning there's a part of you that's missing like a puzzle piece and that someone externally to you has the puzzle piece that you're looking for because you're not whole yourself. 
because you think that that void, that missing puzzle piece is, is something that's bad and needs to be covered up versus understanding that it's part of you and it's part of being whole. You know, one of the analogies that I love that um, my mentor, John Martini and Alok Trivedi talk about is healing can heal, specifically H-E-A-L can stand for an acronym, meaning help everything align to love, everything align to love. And seeing love, not as an infatuation, but rather a synthesis of complementary opposites. Meaning there are parts of you that you maybe despise and there are parts of you that you admire and all of them can serve and they can sync up and you can find that balance from within. So helping everything align with love, helping all the moments that you maybe experience is not healing, actually align with love and integrating it into yourself. What do I mean by this? Well, if you've experienced things that you are shameful of, like maybe if you're an entrepreneur, you've experienced bankruptcy bankruptcy, or issues with money. If you're someone who has experienced a version of sexual abuse, emotional abuse, divorce, uh, maybe you had to fire a, a team member, you had to fire a client, you got into an argument. You think that all those things are separate from healing when in reality, the more that you can see how those experiences have served you, have supported you in your wholeness and can become a synthesis of, you know, aligning the opposites as one whole. The more that you can see how it's served, you actually become more whole and you see it as on the way, not in the way, and how it actually is healing. Learning how to love those experiences and how they've worked for you and supported you in your growth and your wholeness is part of healing. And you don't have to continue to outsource your healing to something external. And you're not going to get rid of those things, right? They've happened. So why not integrate them? Why not learn how those voids have actually driven your values. Now, you'll hear me use a lot of these words in future podcast episodes, and a lot of what I'm speaking to is the type of uh, Demartini breakthrough work that I facilitate as a certified facilitator in that work is helping you align these things with love and not feel so ashamed and not having it drive you into these behaviors and actions that don't really align with you. You know, you want to fill your day with actions that inspire you and not actions that despire you and distract you. So I mentioned it briefly, but another myth is outsourcing your healing to something external, thinking that some doctor or guru or practitioner has all the healing answers and you just need to keep paying them for those answers rather than actually learning a methodology and learning a way of learning how to heal yourself. I posted on social media the other day how if you are someone who does work with clients, if you can teach your clients a methodology and you can teach them a process of learning how to heal themselves, that is way more valuable to them than actually just, you know, fixing them and they them needing to come to you every time there's something broken. Now, will that consciousness exist on the planet? And will you attract people where they they just see you as that and they just want you to fix them? Yes, that's that's part of it. There's a lot of different consciousness on the planet and they all serve, but that can get very exhausting, right? You guys, you all, all of you know who are work in the health field, it can be very exhausting to feel like you're constantly someone's crutch and and they haven't learned the resources to heal themselves right? So the last myth that I have written down, and there's probably plenty more, and that's why I encourage you to get that book, Healing Myths, Healing Magic. But the, these are the main ones I think that are important to demystify is an identity crisis when it comes to healing. So if you're constantly healing, but you never really feel and access your wholeness, but you're on the journey, right? You're doing the work as everyone says, and everyone markets these days, If you were actually whole and you saw yourself as whole and you saw yourself as who you want to be and become, that can actually create an identity crisis if the thing that you're looking to quote unquote heal and integrate in your life goes away. What do I mean by this? Well, for example, if you've created an identity for yourself, for a label, for a symptom, for a diagnosis, and this is why I'm not a fan of labeling people and diagnoses, I think knowing body symptoms and knowing how things can express is important so you know how to work with it. But if you throw a label at someone, sometimes they live into that identity. And again, it's important to understand how the body works. It's important to understand how it can be categorized. But remember, labels and diagnoses are simply just a a pool of bodily, mental, emotional symptomatology that we're categorizing as one thing oftentimes to then say, okay, what medication matches this algorithm? You're not an algorithm, first of all. You are a divine living ecosystem in a very complex, amazing human being that 
is just that complex and you have a lot of parts and you have, have a lot of moving parts and not everyone falls into those same categories, right? This is the, the myth of normal. That's another great book, Gabor Mate, the myth of normal. Definitely put that one on your shelf. It's a big one, but it's good. So what happens on the healing journey when you constantly are on the healing journey, you don't reclaim your wholeness and you're whole and healed just as you are right now. Doesn't mean you're not going to deal with challenges again, right? But it's how fast you adapt. You can essentially get stuck in just an identity crisis. And a lot of people, I think, subconsciously avoid being whole and reclaiming that for themselves because so much of who they are is wrapped up in a label. So much of who they are is wrapped up in a name. And they're so fearful that if this thing goes away, who does that make me? Right? And I I totally get that. And I'm here to invite you that what if and what would it look like to know that you are whole at every part of the journey? How would you operate differently? You know, so, so many of us have our identity, like I said, wrapped up in our personality traits and labels and things that have happened to us, but that's not actually who you are. Those things have happened in our life, but it doesn't mean that you need to claim that as an identity. You know, for a long time, I operated from like, oh, I, I was molested and I was sexually abused and like, I'm a survivor and like me too. And that type of fuel and energy served for a little bit until that energy ran out. And I realized that I was just perpetuating the story into the future. And I felt like the only way I could draw inspiration was to actually go back to my trauma And like have a re-traumatizing experience to be like, oh, but I have overcome, right? Um, And again, that can be part of the healing journey. But there comes a point where trauma is a source of fuel. You're going to run out of that resource, right? And eventually we have to learn how do we draw upon different parts of us? How How do we draw upon who we are now from more of a spiritual essence? How do we draw upon our ever changing parts as fuel rather than what has happened to us? Now, again, I think traumatic experiences and those root experiences, as I call them, can serve in learning how it shaped us, but that doesn't mean that's how you have to identify in the world. So that can take time. If you've wrapped yourself into an identity, it can take time to dismantle that and actually discover, like, who am I beyond that experience, right? Who am I beyond this thing? Because you are so much more than that. And I I hope you're getting that from this message. So I'm not here to blame or shame you for for labels or things that have helped you make progress in your healing journey, but I am here to invite you into something different, into a new paradigm, into a new perspective. So how how do we begin that journey? Well, let's shift the word from healing to wholeness journey. And asking the questions as I asked, and I'll repeat them, this might be important for you to journal on. What would it look like to know that you are whole at every part of the journey, regardless of what has happened to you and regardless of what will happen to you and for you? Excuse me. What would it look like to operate from that perspective? (coughs) Almost got through an episode without coughing. That's okay, right? Doesn't mean I'm any less than whole because sometimes we cough. (laughs) I'm getting it out and using my voice. Another shift, looking at healing, taking away the I-N-G and heal, representing an acronym, standing for help everything align with love. And seeing love not as an infatuation where all you experience is joy and bliss, but rather a synthesis of complementary opposites. The way I like to think about that is the yin-yang symbol. So, you know, the, the dollop of consciousness, as my Zen wellness teacher teaches, Jason, the dollop of consciousness in the yin yang, yin yang actually, and then the black and the white, and how that, even though it shows contrast, is actually whole. So that's what I like to experience as love now is how can I synthesize these experiences I thought were bad or I judged myself, but how can I actually connect it and say, you know what? How is this of benefit to me? How did this serve me? And you might be thinking in the back of your head, well, I don't know how molestation would serve. I don't know how sexual abuse would serve. That's part of the coaching that I do. So I'm not asking you to do that in this episode, but just to expand your consciousness that 
things that have happened in the past, unless you start to see that there was some service to you as a human being, you will constantly default into victimhood. That's just how it is. That's how I've seen it. I've been doing this work for a long time. And if you constantly live into the story of like, this happened to me and I'm always a victim, then you live into that Cartman's triangle side. And the truth is we are all of them. We are the victim, we are the persecutor, and we are the hero. We're the hero, villain, victim. I'll get into that in another episode. Trust me, that's that's a topic to talk about. We are all of them, and we've been all of them, and we've been all those parts. Last part in the shift. What would it look like to live your life as though healing and wholeness is always accessible to you? What gets in the way is our perception. Everything you want is already here. It's a matter of shifting your perception and your energy state to look at your life differently. And that perhaps you don't need an external person to fix you. Can it be important and supportive to have guides and coaches along the way? Absolutely. But approach it from how can they serve you? How can they teach you things that maybe you didn't learn in school? You know, a big motivator of this podcast too is teaching teaching you things that I've learned along the way, that I've learned in school, that I've learned at workshops that just is not part of our normal educational system and to be a source of empowerment for you. So what would it look like to know that your healing and wholeness is always accessible to you? Sometimes it just takes a little perception shift to get you back to that wholeness state. Do I sometimes default back into victim and what happened to me? Yes, absolutely. You know, Trauma, we know, does impact how our physiology and our neurology is created, especially at a young age. But thanks to epigenetics and thanks to neuroplasticity, we don't have to live in that program. We get to reprogram our body, our mind, our neurology, and our life and know that those experiences eventually don't have as much weight on you the more that you do this work. We got a little brief mini download episode with this one. I hope this episode served looking at some different illusions and myths and addictions of healing and supporting you in making that shift, knowing that you are always whole and healing is a natural part of life. You're always healing, right? It's just sometimes our mind likes to play tricks on us that we're not. I will include the books I mentioned in the description, but to repeat to you, first one, No Bad Parts by Richard Schwartz. Second one, Healing Myths, Healing Magic by Dr. Donnie Epstein. And the last one, The Myth of Normal by Dr. Gabor Mate. Um, He's a pioneer in the trauma healing realm and the trauma integration realm. So I hope you check those out. I'll include them here. Thanks for tuning in with me. Thanks for expanding your consciousness and returning to your wholeness and reclaiming your life from the inside out. This is Dr. Mel with the Project Linus podcast. Keep roaring, keep rising, and as always, keep inspiring. See you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you for joining the Project Linus podcast. Did you find value in today's episode? Help us impact the lives of others by sharing this podcast with someone you know who would resonate and benefit from the Project Linus message. Excited to hear more? We invite you to subscribe on whatever platform you're tuning in on. And we'd be so grateful for you to leave us a review about what you enjoy most, as well as what you'd like to hear more of. Thank you so much for all of your support. Sincerely yours in power, purpose, and play. Dr. Mel with the Project Lioness podcast. Keep rising, keep roaring, and keep inspiring.